Want to learn how to do any times table in one minute or less? Then click on the link below and master any times table you want. Now on to the video. Hi guys and welcome to Intuition Study Services. In today's episode of Lightning Maths, we'll be looking at how to subtract using various methods. The first method we'll look at is the traditional method of borrowing. Then we'll look at the method of using negative numbers, followed by the method of rounding. And last but not least, we'll take a look at the one up, one down method. Okay, so let's take a look. So there are many different ways to subtract. When we subtract, there are times when we have to borrow. For instance, if we take the sum 25 minus 8, which we can also write in column form. So we put 25 at the top and 8 at the bottom. And because we want to subtract, we put a minus, so 25 minus 8. Notice that we can also fill in this blank space with a zero. This is optional, but it can help and it will help as you'll see further in the video. Okay, so we have 25 minus 8. What we normally do is we normally start from the right hand side Side or the unit side and we check to see if the top digit or the top unit is bigger than the bottom unit. In this case 5 is not bigger than 8 and this cannot be done unless we go into negative numbers but that's the second method we will be looking at. So to avoid going into negative numbers since 5 cannot take away 8 we have to borrow from the tens column. So we borrow 1 from the tens column and we add that 1 and we add that borrowed 10 to the existing unit which is 5 to make 15. So the 1 and the 5 now now becomes 15 and now since 15 is greater than 8 we can do the subtraction so 15 take away 8 equals 7 and then we can move on to the tens column where we just have 1 left now subtracting down so 1 take away 0 is just 1 so the answer becomes 17 now this method is all well and good but there are also other methods which avoid borrowing and they should definitely be explored let's consider using negative numbers this also helps with practicing with negative numbers as well so if we take the same sum 25 minus 8 Let's fill in the missing gap again with 0. Now, we start from the unit side and we take a look at 5 minus 8. Now, if we go into negative numbers, we can see that 5 take away 8 gives us minus 3. So if we just briefly put minus 3 down in the answer line, this avoids borrowing because now we can go to the tens column and we still have the 2 there. That 2 represents 20. So 20 or 2 take away 0 just gives us 2 and we can put that in the answer line. Now we can see we have a 2 and a minus 3. That 2, remember, represents 20 and if we read that we have 20 minus 3 which equals 17 and that still gives the same answer again. Let's consider another example. Let's take for instance 251 take away 179. Okay so if we start from the right hand side 1 take away 9 gives us minus 8 so we put that in the answer line then 5 take away 7 gives us minus 2 we put that in the answer line so now minus 2 minus 8 together that reads as minus 28 and then we can go to the hundreds column 2 take away 1 or 200 take away 100 is just 100 and we just put the 1 in the answer line so we have 1 or 100 minus 20 minus 8 100 minus 20 is 80 and 80 minus 8 is 72 so the answer is 72 let's take a look at another example let's consider 5671 take away 3478 Okay, so starting again from the right hand side, 1 take away 8 equals minus 7, so we put that in the answer line. Then 7 take away 7 is just 0, 6 take away 4 is 2, and 5 take away 3 is 2. So the answer reads 2200, and then we want to minus 7 from 2200. So 2200 minus 7 is 2193. Let's take a look at how this compares to the method of rounding, which also avoids borrowing. So if we consider the first sum, 25 minus 8, what we can do here is we can round the bottom number to the nearest 10, 100 or 1000, depending on how many digits there are. And whatever number we add to the bottom number, we do the same to the top number. So in this case, since we only have a one digit number at the bottom, which is just 8, we just round that to the nearest 10 by adding 2. And we also do the same to the top, we add 2 to the top number. So 25 add 2, it gives us 27, and 8 add 2 is just 10. So now the new sum becomes 27 take away 10. 10, which is just 17 so this can avoid any notion of borrowing so let's try this on three digits or triple digit sums so let's take the example we looked at before so 251 take away 179 now since there are three digits at the bottom we round to the nearest hundred since number 100 also contains three digits we see that 179 is 21 digits away from 200 so 
so we have to add 21 279 to make 200 but we also have to add 21 to the top number of 251 to balance things out so we have 251 plus 21 which gives us 272 and we want to subtract that from 179 plus 21 which gives us 200 so now the new sum becomes 272 take away 200 which just gives us 72 now this is all well and good but what happens when we have four digits or more so for instance if we have 80005 or 80005 take away 67899 it could take us a bit of time to work out what the bottom number should be rounded to so what we can do instead is we can use the one up one down method and we only use this method when the bottom digits are bigger than the top digits so looking at this example 80005 take away 67899 so what we do here we, we start on the right hand side again now since 5 is less than 9 and since 5 cannot subtract 9 unless we go into negative numbers what we do is we put a 1 in front of the 5 to make 15 this is the 1 up and we look at the next digit long in the bottom row and put a 1 in front of that this is the 1 down now with this 1 we add it to the actual digit so the 1 plus the 9 becomes 10 so if we go back now we have 15 take away 9 which gives us 6 and we put that in the answer line now moving on to the next column we have 0 take away 10 now since 0 cannot take away 10 we put 1 up so 1 next to the 0 this makes 10 and 1 down 1 next to the 8 and this makes 9 9. So now 10 take away 10 is just 0. So we put that in the answer line. Moving on to the next column, we have 0 take away 9. Since 0 cannot take away 9, we do 1 up. So 1 with the 0, that makes 10. And 1 down in the next column. This makes 8. So 1 plus 7 is 8. Now 10 take away 9 is just 1. So we put that 1 in the answer line. And now we can look at 0 take away 8. Now since 0 cannot take away 8, do 1 up and 1 down. So 1 plus 6 equals 7. So now 10 take away 8 equals 2 and finally we can see that 8 take away 7 equals 1 so the answer is 12106 let's take a look at another example let's consider 9 1 2 3 2 4 take away 6 7 8 7 8 9 okay so starting from the right hand side since 4 cannot take away 9 we put 1 up 1 with the 4 that makes 14 and 1 down with the digit in the next column adding that 1 with the 8 that makes 9 so going back 14 take away 9 equals 5 put that in the answer line now since 2 cannot subtract 9 we do 1 up and 1 down that 1 plus the 7 makes 8 so we can change that now 12 take away 9 gives us 3 we'll put that in the answer line then we look at 3 take away 8 now since this cannot be done without going into negative numbers we put 1 up and 1 down the 1 down the 1 with the 8 and the 1 down makes 9 so now we have 13 take away 8 that gives us 5 moving on to the next column we have 2 take away 9 which cannot be done so we do 1 up and 1 down so now we have 12 at the top now so 12 take away 9 gives us 3 moving on to the next column we have 1 take away 8 which cannot be done so we do one up one down now the top becomes 11 take away 8 and that gives us 3 finally we have the 9 take away the 7 since the 1 plus the 6 became 7 so 9 take away 7 is 2 so the answer is 233,535 so notice how in the original question we deliberately chose the bottom numbers to be greater than the digits in the top number to illustrate this example of the one up one down method as long as you consciously remember then when we put the one down with the bottom numbers that we have to add them to those digits. Point to note, the one up one down method can be used on any number of digits from two upwards, just as long as we remember to fill in any blank spaces with zeros. Okay, so everybody should have done well on those, but if you feel that you need a bit more practice, feel free to rewind this video and you can work through the methods again. Leave in the comments below which method is your favorite. If you found this tutorial helpful, then do leave a like, comment, share with anyone who you feel this may benefit, and do subscribe and click the bell for all the latest tips, tricks, revision and exam techniques, as well as the latest releases that will be coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.